Historically, red spruce supported several hundred different animal species. Um, and when I say red spruce, I really mean a red spruce northern hardwood forest. That's well-balanced variety of tree species that are dominated by red spruce but with a lot of variety. So it supported several hundred different species that included rare and endangered species today like the West Virginia northern flying squirrel, uh, game species that are in decline, like the snowshoe hare, and a variety of bird species like the saw wet owl. A lot of those species are really struggling today because what we have left of the red spruce forest is very fragmented and doesn't provide extensive habitat. So it's really critical that we restore an interconnected matrix of spruce forests for those species right now. But going forward, the Central Appalachians are going to be a migration superhighway in the face of climate change. So we can quantitatively say that animal species are moving upslope and they're moving northward. And in the eastern U.S. that funnels those species onto the crest of the Appalachians and up north towards the boreal regions. Now not everything is going to go that far, but there's going to be a lot of species flow right in and around this region right in the high elevations that were historically spruce forest. Those animals, of course, are seeking cooler and wetter habitats, and red spruce forests are the coolest and wettest habitat we have. So red spruce forests, if we can restore them, are going to be a great facilitator for that migratory superhighway. That said, climate change is not going to be good for red spruce. Red spruce is really a boreal species that just holds on in the cool, wet areas now. Uh, and when things heat up, habitats are going to become less suitable for red spruce. Now red spruce forests do self-sustain, even under warm conditions, and so if we can get spruce forests into the canopy before climate change really has its worst effects, then that, spru that spruce forest will self-sustain for a long time. So, prior to the industrial logging era, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, red spruce was the dominant canopy conifer in the high elevations of the Central Apps, especially West Virginia. So in West Virginia, red spruce dominated about half a million acres and was an important forest tree on about a million or a million and a half acres. After the industrial logging era, red spruce was essentially wiped out except for a handful of pockets here and there that were missed by the big cut. Um, since then it's gradually recovered naturally up to about 50,000 acres of healthy red spruce forest remaining, so about 10% about of its original range. So studies in the early to mid 1900s suggested that red spruce would take about a thousand years to recover naturally. We're 100 years in and it's about 10% of the way there. so. We're pretty much on track.